hi what's up you guys i hope you all are having a great day today so the day has finally come and we will be talking about megan the stallion's third studio album megan this was one of the most highly anticipated rap albums of the year and i am more than excited to get into it in this video we're going to cover it all we're going to talk about the singles the album artwork the track list as well as the album itself but before we get into the album, I do want to say if you're interested in female artists, music conversation, music debates, music reviews, and really anything music related, definitely consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. All right, let's talk about Megan. So before we jump into the album, I want to talk about some of the lead up to the album. So prior to the album coming out, Megan delivered three different singles, each with varying sounds and overall approaches. The lead single, Cobra, was one of Megan's most vulnerable songs to date, detailing her personal mental health struggles. The second single, Hiss, was cutthroat and reminded viewers not to play with Megan Thee Stallion. And finally, Boa, the third single, gave us a classic, fun, energetic Megan approach that many fans know and love. As each single varied in sound, subject matter, and overall approach, it seemingly looked as if Megan was prepping to deliver a well-rounded album covering multiple topics and giving us a closer look into who she really is. In the weeks leading to the album's release, Megan showed us three different artworks for the album cover. The first cover that Megan previewed depicted her as a butterfly exiting its cocoon, photographed by the legendary David LaChapelle. Now, this initial cover art proved to be fairly polarizing as many fans online either loved the album cover or completely hated it. While I saw the clear symbolism of the cover with the butterfly representing transformation and rebirth, I didn't personally care for this cover at first as I felt the overall colors were just dull and muted. I will say that after a while, I kind of realized that the colors and the hue choices might be an overall reflection of the album sonically, thus it did grow on me a little bit but it just was not what I initially expected. The second cover art was previewed shortly after and showed Megan emerging from a snake egg, also displaying the overall theme of rebirth and transformation. This cover felt more aligned with the singles that we received and not just because of the snake theme. The second cover art was overall cleaner in my opinion and better represented the theme of transformation and evolution. I would say that out of each cover that we received, this one was probably my favorite. The final cover art that Megan shared with us was very similar to the second artwork, depicting Megan crawling out of an egg, yet overall was much simpler. This ultimately ended up being the cover that Megan chose for the album. About a week prior to the album's release, Megan dropped the official track list for the album. Obviously, it's hard to predict what each song will sound like based off of the title alone, but it was nice to see the upcoming features on this album. I will say I did expect more collabs from other rap girls such as Cardi or even Lotto to be there, but the Glorilla collab did feel promising as they seemed to have good chemistry with each other and of course, Wannabe was a bop. I will say when I saw the Victoria Monet was on this album, I got super excited. I love Victoria's music and I was so ready for these two to deliver some like heartfelt, emotional hot girl anthem. As for the rest of the features, I wasn't like super hype about them, but I'm not one to judge an album for its featured artists, thus I was excited to hear some new artists on this project. Alright, I think I have prefaced this album enough, let's finally get into my review of Megan. So let me kick this off by saying fuck, I'm just playing. <laughs> but for real, I didn't expect Megan to come into this album swinging like she did. Like those first three songs, Megan sounded pissed. I do appreciate Megan finally clapping back at the allegations that Nikki threw onto her. I know many were praising her for being unbothered, but personally, I feel rap is not the sport to be unbothered in, thus I was happy to finally hear her response. I think the way she went about it was also smart as hell. It kind of forces anyone who's curious to give her album a stream opposed to just making a dedicated diss track, so I gotta give Megan her props there. I love how she opened the album with such strong energy. It really kept me entertained, engaged, and it hyped me up from the jump. I think my favorite song so far would be Odegu Hot Girl. My apologies if I butchered that pronunciation, but I think the beat is just so fun. I'm pretty sure that this is the track that she sampled an anime theme song. Honestly, I don't know. I'm not an anime watcher. All I know is that this beat is fun as hell, and it's so sonically different than anything she's done in the past. It's nice to hear her experimenting with new sounds, and I would love to hear her rip more anime beats like this. Downstairs DJ is another personal favorite. To make a whole song talking about your nani and feeling yourself, honestly, is the ish I love. 
it's kind of unserious in a way, but the anthem I didn't know I needed. And the last song that I really want to highlight is Spin. I knew I was going to love this song before it even dropped because I love Victoria's music and she did not disappoint on this track. Both girls absolutely killed this song, like Megan gave great verses. Victoria sounds beautiful, like they are just a great duo. And I would love to hear more collabs from them as I think they really complement each other. So going into this album, I honestly expected something extremely personal. And I do think Megan gave us that, but not necessarily in the way that many anticipated. I think many fans wanted an album to get to know Megan Pete, but Megan really gave us an insight to who Megan Thee Stallion is and her struggles. It feels like quite a bit of these songs detail her experiences and mental state as an entertainer trying to navigate the industry. From rap beefs, lost friendships, to various rumors spread about her, I feel that Megan gave us more a look into everything that she's experienced in this industry opposed to a look into her past. And to be completely honest with you guys, I don't mind this approach at all. I think a lot of people really wanted her to go into her childhood or just really personal topics, but considering everything she's gone through within the past few years of her career, I don't mind her opening up about her struggles as a celebrity. I saw some people say that this shouldn't have been a self-titled album as it wasn't extremely personal, but I think the title she chose for this album is a good reflection of it. I feel like this album was her way of saying, oh, y'all want to talk about Megan? Let me tell you about Megan. It feels as if she used this album as a way to clear her name of the countless claims that people try to put onto her. Personally, my biggest critique of Megan the album is that I find a lot of these songs to be repetitive. I know a lot of people are quick to say that a lot of her songs sound the same, but that's not what I'm trying to get out here. A lot of these songs have a really underwhelming chorus. It's like she'll get on here and she'll kill a verse, but then she'll come through with the most generic, repetitive chorus that makes me think a lot of these hooks were an afterthought. Mamushi, again, sorry if I mispronounced, is one of the biggest examples of this. The chorus is literally just her saying star over and over, and it honestly gets a little annoying after a while. I'm not sure if this was done so Yuki Chiba was able to also pronounce the chorus, but personally, I much rather would have had a thought out chorus in Japanese opposed to both of them repeating the same word. Vigoroa and Worthy were also some songs that stuck out to me for having good verses, but just a really boring chorus. To be honest, the lack of effort in some of these choruses is really holding me back from fully enjoying each track. Besides that, I did enjoy the album overall. I don't think it's quite what I expected, but I've been listening to it throughout my workday and it's a really nice listen, honestly. I really like the way the album flows, you know, it starts off really strong with her swinging out of the gate, then she gives you some fun bops to turn up to, and then she concludes the album by slowing things down and getting vulnerable. I personally would say that this is my favorite album from Megan. I don't really care for good news at all, and Traumazine is good, but it's not something that I'm always coming back to revisit. Megan, the album has a good balance of vulnerable tracks and energetic bops. I definitely see myself returning to this album, but it is fairly new, so we'll have to see how it holds up. But I'm definitely interested in hearing all of your guys' thoughts and opinions on Megan. Was Megan everything you wanted to be, or are you still left wanting more? Don't be afraid to sound off in the comments. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and making it this far, and hopefully I'll see all of you guys in the next one. Peace!